All right, today we're going to be going over retaking A site on Raid S and D. This is a really fun map to play, and it's a really important, crucial way of playing as a team because a lot of the times teams are able to plant the bomb at the A site. So it's a really important to work together as a team to retake on this site. So here, let's talk about first the early round. It's really important on Raid defense to take control of this mid area because if teams are going a site and you know that's the main common site for teams to go on offense you know if you control this mid area it is impossible for them to plant on this side of the a site you want to be able to you know have presence mid be able to put shots in there and just make them worry about you mid because if they are able to plant on this side and then just play art or you know driveway here and play post plant it's super super hard for the defense to retake in that sense so what you want to do as a defense is just eliminate that possibility entirely and this is the way you do it you just take mid by yourself first so have presence mid is step number one the step number two is let's say the team on offense is starting to work their way up to ring. Let's say you have one player here towards laundry. You know, it's really hard for a laundry player to, you know, defend the site by himself. So at some point he is probably going to have to just retreat back. And what you want to do here is first keep your presence mid. As you can see, if you keep your presence mid, they can't plant on the art side. So they have to plant for the laundry side here. So what teams would do is they work up, you know, ringside play these little headies at the at the truck or at the white heady play inside laundry plant the bomb here so this is what they would do they would plant the bomb for laundry side and they would try and take control of this entire area and play post plant from it you know sometimes they'd have one guy stay back you know towards red or towards art and play for any flankers but for the most part teams would be trying to take control of this entire area and from this the defense has two separate options. What they can do is that they can group up together and all push out and bully this laundry side, which is you know something that we pride ourselves in at, at New York and uh, doing, and it worked pretty well most of the time. Or you can separate and maybe play two guys wrap back towards jungle or laundry, and then have the other two guys flank, whether it's them pushing through bed and through uh, back red that way or pushing straight through zig to red uh, and flanking in that sense. So, you know, one or the other, maybe sometimes you have three people wrap back, but those were the two separate options for defense. So in my opinion, the most effective way of doing this was just basically having that presence mid first and then all wrapping back together. So let's say you have a guy playing Tiki, he wraps back with your team. You have two, two guys maybe playing mid or one guy playing laundry, he backs up, you all retake together. Because this way, in fact, you know, teams on offense are still gonna be worried about their zig, about their full flank, because if they're fully sending onto the A site, they might send one guy here to watch the flank, but they're also gonna see that there's presence mid. And if they see presence mid, they're going to think, you know, it's a possibility for this player to make a late play. So they're probably thinking, oh, they can probably pinch Zig to, to Art. Or they can pinch through, you know, down here, down these steps and take a long route through the driveway. But whether you, you know, act on that is a different situation. You know, if, if you're a defense and you think teams are going to be thinking like that, you know, that way you can send two people mid, maybe play uh, like what we, we saw in Minnesota the other day try and deny this a plant make the offense worry about you making a possible late play but actually just wrapping back with your team fully and this is what you see in this round here so what we do is we have two players go mid and this is the exact minnesota strat we had number seven watching over them as they push up mid and number five playing b site in case they they went b site from here you know optic is going to motion towards the a site and start taking control of this laundry area we even have three guys mid here. And instead of all pushing through, as you can see, our number one is going to be playing for this angle to see if anyone pushes through Zig and tries to make a late play. But what we do is we just use teamwork. You know, this really works well, especially if you have a blood already. And that way you can just play trades. But from here, you know, it's still 4v4. We have time. We know we have time to def defuse. Like it's not going to take us 40 seconds for all of us to wrap back and then and play together. So we have a bunch of time. We know that all they have is one person watching laundry. They have one person playing for this mid cut because we they did see mid presence. They have number one also watching 
uh, for the flank and number three kind of helping number one out too. But what they don't know is we're all sending our people back towards laundry to retake. And this is how teamwork uh, can be really utilized. So as you can see, number six here and number eight, ASIM and Hydra, they're gonna be sliding together here to coordinate a double chow and, and really bait out anyone that might be watching this crossover here or even playing where Envoy is playing right now on this little heady. So he's gonna see basically three people at the same time, Clay at jungle and then ASIM and Hydra are gonna be sliding together. As you can see here, Number six and number eight slide together this way that they're playing trades. They know if they can play trades together, they're going to be in an advantageous situation. So I can see they play together. They're still getting help from their ARs watching over them. And now, you know, this time they actually split off together, but they could have just, you know, slided in the same direction. This way he has a possibility of killing Hydra, but he ends up winning the 1v1. So ideal situation, they don't split up, but they do just because they didn't know if he would peek the other way. After this, you're still just playing together. You're continuing to bully out laundry so that you can ret retake and defuse on this side. Because if they're playing art, you can still have people watching over laundry or watching over you as you defuse from this side. It's a really hard uh, defuse to stop. As you can see here, Hydra's taking some jiggles here. He's just trying to see any information he can possibly get. We get one guy on the A site and now it's a 4v2, we can start defusing ourselves. And actually what they do here is they call in a lightning strike, which is a really, really awkward situation for us because we need to still defuse the bomb. So it's a really sketchy situation for us. We only have 12 seconds left to defuse at this point. So Clay actually makes a play by going inside of red and killing one of their players. But from here, Paco pretty much just needs to hop on the bomb and defuse right away because they're gonna be looking for this defuse. As you can see, number three here pushing from mid, but Asim has over Hydra, so it's a really good play by Asim. Uh, but then you have number one, Formal, who is pushing outside of red, and he is just late on killing Paco as he slides onto bomb. We end up winning the round. So it's a really tight situation, but I, I really like the teamwork in the retake. Here's another situation against Minnesota, again at champs. This time we're going for you know it's kind of like a counter b but we still do have mid presence as you can see here number one asim is playing mid to deny anyone that might be crossing ring to try and plant we still have two guys b and we had number two watching over asim as he got over mid so we see that most of them are going towards this a site asim shot, shoots after them as you see here and from here it's the same thing we are still playing together asim you know, they see the presence mid, he could possibly make a late play, but we're just going to use teamwork to bail us out in this situation. So we're all wrapping back together. As you can see here, we're taking our time. We know the bomb is going to be planted from here. Once again, sliding together towards this block and with the ARs watching over them, they slide into laundry, get one kill, get another kill. This is just pure bullying out these kills and playing trades. And we do a really good job of it. 4v1 of this situation, it's basically impossible for Major Maniac to stop this uh, from a round loss and we end up winning the round. Really, really clean retake out of the boys. So this is another situation from COD Champs, but this is actually Dallas versus Toronto. So Toronto, once again, they're planning on the A site here. And this is a another type of play where you can, you know, you don't have to wrap back if you want to retake, but this is a really coordinated play by Dallas. So what they did was, again, mid presence, but they also have one, one on a deep flank through bed, and that's Shotzi here. So he's the main core, you know, activator for this play. And what do you know, Toronto doesn't have anyone red or, or watching the flank. They're actually watching the flank from this truck here. So, you know, it is on Shotzi to make a play because number five and number eight, they're going to be backed off by number four and number two here. So they're just trying to, you know, get some shots off, trying to distract as much as possible so that Shotzi can make this play driveway. And as you can see here, Toronto's playing super tight laundry. They're playing some really nice headies, but you know, we're going to use some teamwork out of Dallas here to get control of this situation. As you can see here, number one or number six and number seven are going to teamwork bands playing for this flank here on the truck. Once he's backed off by number seven, number six is able to now kill him while he's prone under the under the truck. And from that, number three has to turn around and now he has to fight on two on one because the rest of his teammates are gonna be focused on these last two guys here back kitchen. 
And from that, the, the two guys actually work together and get a pick themselves. So from this, it's a 4v2. At this point, you just have to play trades. Um, it's a really nice teamwork out of Dallas and in this retake. So you don't technically always have to wrap back. You can make some late plays, but you have to do it methodically and using cross map coordination with your team. So the last situation I want to go over is how you know not to retake. And this is a situation that happened at, at COD Champs weekend, Dallas versus FaZe. And this is a situation where you know you're playing together, but there's just so many openings for the offensive team if you give it to them. And let's say here. Atlanta phase, they've gotten the A site control. Number four, Illy is backed off jungle here. The rest of his team is playing through mid or playing through B, and they're gonna work together on the other side. Thing is though, you can't really leave so much an open space, you know, back kitchen here, back jungle. You can't really have only one guy here because it leaves open the possibility for this team to plant and then take control of laundry and then even make a play kitchen themselves late round. Uh, while you're going to try and work the defuse. So this is a really sketchy situation. You know, you're trying to take their side, but what, you, what do you know? If you take their side, they're going to take your side. As you can see, Illy's the last one on their side. He's just playing back kitchen here while the rest of the team is going to try and make plays driveway and through mid. Thing is though, you know, once again, Cell was one of the best players at playing this van here, and he's going to be watching the flank, uh, similar to how Bance was in the previous round. The only other, you know, distinction from this is that there's just so many open, so much open space for Atlanta to work with on this side of the map now. And once they get the bomb planted, they can have free reign in the entire back jungle area of the map. So they see this, there's trades that go down, they get another kill mid, and from this, five and six are just going to activate towards this side of the map. They know that Illy was the last one there, so they're just going to try and work for him. Once they see him mid, now... Sim can make a late play kitchen. From this, he just gets the, the timing and jump on Ender. And from that, it's a 2v1 with the bomb down. Really hard for Reese Viv to win. And Atlanta clutches that round. And so to recap, you, you want to you know retake together, but you also want to do it so you're not actually giving a lot of space for the offensive team to work with after they planned it. So that does it for this retake strategy, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in the next video.